Okay. Here's what I want to talk about. Um, two days ago, I had a conversation with a woman where she broke down and confessed to me that she loathes herself. And this is not the first time that I've heard somebody use that terminology of self-loathing. And every time I hear it, I am just struck by the words, by the notion of somebody loathing themselves. And I was thinking a lot about it yesterday, wondering if there was a distinction between beating yourself up, being hyper, you know, judgmental, self-critical, uh, and self-loathing. And what I came up with is that when you're self-critical, beat yourself up, hard on yourself, you have a conditioned pattern of focusing on all of your inadequacies, shortcomings, all of the ways in which you're not enough. And uh, that is crippling enough. But when it becomes self-loathing, I think the distinction is that we now blame our shortcomings as the reason that we cannot have the thing that we want most in the world. I will not be able to have what I crave, yearn for, desire, because I'm not enough. And it manifests as this hatred, this self-hatred, blaming yourself and your failures for now this pain that you cannot and will not have what you want most. And that is brutal. But that also holds within it an opportunity. Because if we look at this woman as an example, the impetus for our conversation, we were talking about her, her relationship with her boss and how she seeks his validation. She needs his approval and she has done enough therapy in her life to know that this goes back to her father and her daddy issues of, of seeking his approval and validation and never getting it and now going into the world, you know, trying to get it from men, professionally, romantically, socially, and, uh, and it not working, okay? So if we use her as an example to break down and analyze, so what is it then that you're ultimately wanting that you think you can't get because you're not enough? What is it that you're really wanting then? Well, she wants validation. Well, what is validation? I want you to tell me that I'm enough. I want to feel enough. Well, what's enough? I want to feel worthy of love. Okay, good. You want to feel enough and worthy of love. You want love. Fantastic. Let's see if there is another way that we could go about giving you that which you desire to feel enough and worthy of love. Because your current approach is definitely not working. We could all, as rational, intelligent adults, look at this strategy and say, yeah, this is a bad strategy. This is never going to take you to what you desire, and here's why. If I give away my power to feel good about myself, if I give it to you, well, that's scary because what if you don't give it to me? What if you don't like me? What if you aren't happy with me? I have no power, I'm completely at your mercy. And even worse, what if you give it to me, but then I mess up and you take it away. You go away, you leave me here, sitting in my greatest pain and fear that I'm not enough. And that is exactly what happens because when I'm operating out of fear, it, it manifests as a neediness, a clinginess, a desperation. Please love me, like me, tell me I'm pretty, tell me I did a good job. This neediness repels people. It pushes people away, professionally, romantically, socially, it doesn't matter. And so it is an unfortunate irony that that's how it expresses and manifests, is when I need you to validate me, my neediness inherently repels you, thus creating this experience over and over and over that I must not be enough. 
I'm not worthy of love. And when you have the experience enough, you start to give up hope that I'm ever gonna be able to fix it, solve it, figure it out, be perfect. I'm gonna die alone in isolation and massive pain of my inferiority. That is the problem. But the good news is, the problem is not in you, it is in your approach, your strategy to feel enough. It doesn't work. It's never going to take you. It's never gonna give you what you want. But the good news is, there's a better way to get that outcome, to feel enough, which is to realize that you are enough. <laughs> Here and now, exactly as you are, you are enough. It has been a, a terrible illusion, delusion, that you've been operating under since childhood, believing that there's something wrong with you and you're not enough. Um, if you go back to when you were born, uh, when, when a baby is born, an infant, what does that baby have to do to deserve love? to be worthy of love, to be enough. Nothing. It just is inherently deserving and worthy of love. Even though it poops and pees and cries and takes the parent's sleep, it's a total pain in the ass. And yet still, love, 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 love. Does that expire? Is there an expiration date where we say, okay, baby, it's been long enough. Get a job. Make me laugh. Say all the right things. You should look better. No, that doesn't suddenly expire our inherent worthiness and enoughness. But what does happen is at some point in our adolescence, we go through an experience where love is withheld, either by our parents or in the school play yard somewhere we go through a painful experience where love is withheld and because we don't understand that the real reason that's happening is this person doesn't feel enough this person is in pain and the way they're dealing with it is to withhold love from me we don't understand that as kids and so the way we rationalize it is oh i must not be good enough i should um be smarter i should be prettier I should have a lower body fat percentage. I should talk less. I should speak up more. I should be more intelligent. More, 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 because I'm not enough. And we spend our whole life now setting goals of what we think will make us enough. When I have 5% body fat and I get rid of this love handle, then I'm gonna feel enough. When I have this much money and drive this car and wear these labels, then. People are going to be so jealous of me and they're going to think I'm so cool and everybody's going to want me and validate me and then I'm going to feel enough. But I got news for you. That's not the way that it works. You will never solve uh, an internal problem of not feeling enough with an external solution, whether it be somebody's uh, fickle approval or some external achievement. It won't ever be enough. It's a mirage. Enough is always just out there. The opportunity then for our salvation is to <laughs> embrace that our primary human fears that we all have as human beings. We're all connected in this experience of being human and that our primary fears are that one, we're not enough. We're afraid we're not enough. And two, therefore we won't be loved. Welcome to the club. If you have ever felt that way, it is not evidence that there's something wrong with you. It is evidence of your humanity. It is what you do with that feeling that makes all the difference. So if, if you and I are connected in this vulnerability, this fear that we're not enough, okay, as human beings, the difference is, do you pull away and hide and prepare and study and read how to win friends and influence people and become an expert at something that you could talk about at parties? 
Do you put on a mask of who you think you need to be? Do you walk this tightrope of perfection of what you think is going to make you worthy of love? Or do you just say, oh shit, I'm enough now. I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to go for what it is that I want. I'm just going to put myself out there. I'm going to help and make a difference in some way. Are you willing to be vulnerable? The experience, the fear that I may not be enough, this may go poorly, you may reject me, I may fall on my face and say something totally ridiculous. This may go very badly, I'm not sure, but I'm willing to go for it. I'm willing to put myself out there and have the scary conversation. I'm willing to ask for what I want and need without a guarantee that you're gonna give it to me, that you're gonna stay. I'm willing to put myself out there, my feelings, knowing they may not be returned. I'm willing to go full out for what I want in this life, knowing I may fall down. It may not happen. But the certainty comes from knowing that if it doesn't happen, if you do leave, if I do say something stupid, it doesn't mean I'm less than. It doesn't mean I'm not enough. It doesn't mean I'm not worthy of love. It doesn't really mean anything except you're out there living life big. You're showing up. Your significance cannot be taken away or added. It's innate. It's a moot point. Go live your life. Your enoughness is a moot point. And here is the thing that I don't think a lot of people realize. That genuinely confident people, not cocky arrogance, which is just a facade of confidence, not genuine, but real sincere, confident people do not spend a lot of time thinking about themselves. I don't wake up and look in the mirror and say, oh yes, girl, you are good enough, you're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. I, I really largely lose my consideration of, of me. I instead am focused on living my life fully. What do I want to experience today? What do I want to contribute today? How much fun can I have today? What do I want to achieve, create? When you are being self-conscious, you are conscious thinking about yourself. Confident, genuinely confident people are not thinking about themselves. They're thinking about what they want to do in the world, what they want to achieve, create, share, contribute, experience in the world. Their enoughness is a moot point. Of course I'm enough to go have fun. What do you have to do to have fun? What are the qualifications? Of course I'm capable of making somebody feel good and contributing or helping in some way. Of course I can create and achieve the things that are truest to me. And even if I have to fail and get some feedback along the way, it is a moot point, your enoughness. Stop seeking it from others. You are wasting and missing your life, everything that it can and should be. Go out into the world and follow your passions and your desires and share your unique and significant gifts designing a life of significance where that's the paradigm shift. It no longer becomes how can I feel significant? It's how can I make the most of my time here? How can I live a significant life? Not about my own ego and glorification, but about the fullness, the breadth and depth of the experience of my time here. So, so I have to say about that vulnerability is the key. I hope that helps somebody.